We're at Ebon Field in Kohler, Wisconsin, where tonight Sheboygan Lutheran Kohler takes on Howard's Grove in Central Lakeshore Conference action. Hello, everybody. My name is Mike Martin, and joining me is former coach, athletic director, and teacher at Kohler, Dan Burr. Dan, thanks a lot for filling in for Chris Wright. Uh, thank you for having uh, me, Mike, because there's nothing greater than high school football in the fall. Now, you are coach out here for 19 years, and you were telling us a little before we got on the rivalry that's involved between Kohler and Howard's Grove. Yes, this rivalry, uh, Mike, is just like a north-south rivalry, and uh, it wasn't just in football. It also was in basketball, and uh, back in the 70s and 80s, uh, we really had something going here, and it, went, it was going back and forth, and both schools were very competitive. Probably the really big rivalry, and I know you're a football man, but it had to be those Kohler uh, against Howard's Grove uh, basketball games when Tom Grams was out there. Yes, and at that time I was also coaching, so yes it was. The, the basketball was a big rivalry, the football, some of those basketball games we got about 1,000 people. Football, we'd get between 1,000 and 1,500 out here. By the way, I didn't mean to imply you weren't the basketball coach because I knew that. But uh, let's talk a little bit about tonight's game, and uh, let's start off with Kohler... Uh, Sheboygan Lutheran Kohler and uh, what they have in store tonight. You know, what do they got on offense and, you know, what can they do against this Howard's Grove team because they appear to be a pretty good ball club. Yeah, Lutheran's going to have, Lutheran Kohler's going to have their hands full because I know uh, they, they're going to run a 4-4 defense. They run out of a, a pro uh, power or a pro set with an I formation. Uh, but uh, I know their quarterback, they had a quarterback change this year. And I know that's always very difficult when you go with a younger person. Uh, Pretty diversified in running too. I think they had three different guys listed as a uh, you know major ball carrier, so that'll prov uh, should provide some problems for Howard's Grove's defense. You might think. Yes, uh, I'm sure they're hoping that. I think any time that you uh, want a successful team, what you're looking for is a good running game first, and then you want a, a passing game that goes along with it. Let's talk a little bit about Howard's Grove because uh, they're very skilled at the skill positions. A lot of speed. Yes, from what I can tell. Uh, the, the, overall good team speed and I know when I was coaching here at Kohler that's one of the things I liked our linemen were they're not very big just like with Howard's Grove but I had kids that could run the, the 40 and about five and I'm sure they got kids that fast and I know they got a, a receiver this Verth who, who runs in track and is just really fast. Now as a defen uh, defensive coach for uh, Sheboygan Lutheran Kohler how do you defense that kind of speed? What do you do? Well, it, 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 depends if they, it depends on how much they run the ball and how much they, they plan on throwing the ball. If, if, if I knew that he was really a threat in throwing, I'd probably have somebody up there chucking him and then playing a zone. Okay. We're going to step out. When we come back, we'll have the start of tonight's ball game. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. These days, kids are logged on or plugged in almost 24-7. Parents need to start early to help kids make good technology choices. But where do you start? Visit tunedinfamily.com. Get the tools you need to make sure they're plugged in to the values that are important to your family. Hey Kyle. What are you doing? We need to talk about your choice of games. Tunedinfamily.com. Helpful tools you can use for the good of your family. Two million seals and counting, killed over the last decade. Make your voice heard. Visit ifa.org to end the cruelty. Energy prices are just too high. That's what drove us to attempt the first static electricity powered home. Success has been elusive. Besides making the house itself more energy efficient, the smartest thing we did was adding Energy Star products. Static electricity may not be viable, but at least we've taken a step for our future. Anybody can make their home more energy efficient. Good night, sweetie. Good night, Mommy. Mm -hmm. ah!
the United Church of Christ. No matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, you're welcome here. There you see the uh, starting offense being introduced for uh, Howard's Grove. We got Eric Marginovich. Joe Hansen is the quarterback, number 12. Elliot Thilke is a running back. Also coming out is number 27, David Wirtz, a wide receiver and running back. Colby Nenig is a guy we didn't mention in the uh, opening, but uh, he's a great linebacker and uh, also made the dirty dozen last year for the Sheboygan Press. Also starting is uh, Jacob Milbreth, he's a lineman. Josh Flesh, number 62 in the line. This is the offense for Howard's Grove. Paul Clemens, offensive lineman. Jimmy Hall, number 70, starting in the line. And 79, Chris Klieger, starting in the offensive line. Chris is only a sophomore. And starting at a tight end position is Jason Ploss. He's a junior. And, uh, like I mentioned, he'll be at uh, tight end. There you see uh, Sheboygan Lutheran Kohler getting ready to be introduced. Starting defense. Jason Noyes, six feet, 275 pounds. Tim Miroff, 5'10", 230 pound junior, starting in the defensive line. <laughs> and they bumped the shoulders at him out in the field and one guy went down. Zach Frank in the defensive line. We're just, we don't have the starting lineups uh, ahead of time. We're just listening to the field announcer. Number 56, Matt Osladell is a uh, junior, six feet, 170 pounds. <laughs> Before when they bumped chest, number 64 bumped off a 76 and went down. <laughs> number 55, Will Schmidt. I got a feeling he's a linebacker because they go on a 4-4 set. Another linebacker, Ryan Johansson is a six. They got him listed at 6'10". I think that's supposed to be six feet, 230 pounds. He's a junior. Another linebacker, Eric Backhouse, 5'11", senior. He goes 200 pounds. A lot of good-sized kids. Very good. Mike Knobble is a 5'11", junior. He'll also uh, tote the ball quite a bit on offense. Kurt Stilo is a senior, goes 5'9", 155 pounds. He's a defensive back. Number six, junior Harrison Dale. Harrison Dale is a 6'2", junior, goes 195 pounds. Dominic, Dominic Fiorini is a 5'10", senior. You know him, Dan. Yep. He's a Kohler kid. He's a good athlete. Had a good game uh, in their last contest. He had uh, five catches for 190 yards, two touchdowns, and then he also had a 97-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. So, you know, we, we touted about the uh, Howard's Grove speed. And Dominic was a good 400-meter uh, runner okay, so for Kohler High School. So he's actually a pretty strong kid, I would think, in terms of, you know, endurance. Our officials tonight are Lyle Schneider, Dick Hubner, Jeff Engel, Corey Scheffner, and Doug Engelbrecht. Head official is uh, Lyle Schneider. Looks like uh, Howard's Grove will be uh, taking the opening kickoff. Now you mentioned there was a Bit in the paper about uh, Howard's Grove having a pretty good uh, kicker. Cott, I think his name was. Yes, Cott. Uh, from what I had read in the paper, that he is uh, uh, was a pretty good kicker last year. I think he was all conference, Central Lakeshore, and in the summer he uh, went to a kicking camp at Whitewater. Okay. All right. 
back deep for uh, Howard's Grove is it looks at number 21 is uh, Elliot Thielke. And I can't get the number of that other guy. It's got a two, two at the end. I think it's 22, Andrew Verfruth, yep. the speedster. Thielke takes it at about the 18. Trying to get wide. He's got it. He's got a great return, I think. Flags down. Yeah, flags down, so that's gonna get called back, but boy, what a great return. And a penalty. Dominic Farini was on the tackle. Well, he fumbled, you know, sometimes they say when you fumble the, the reception of the kick, that kind of throws off the timing of the defense, and uh, boy, it certainly worked for uh, Howard Grove that time, but uh, the penalty is gonna bring this back. And Marty, they also had a nice wall set up over there to the right. They executed it very well. All right, the ball being uh, marched back to uh, just, well, they're bringing them way back to about the uh, 26 yard line, I believe that is. Okay, the deep back is uh, Thielke, 21. Hanson under center. Second back Thielke. through, th he broke right through. He's on his way. He could go for a touchdown on this. He eluded one tackle. He's got one more to beat if he can get it. Farini. Farini gets him inside the 20 yard line down to about the 10 yard line. Wow, what a carry that was. 64 yards. He had good blocking by his offensive line on that one, Marty. And it's just a hair outside the uh, 10 yard line, so we're gonna call it the 11. It's uh, first and 10 at the 11. That makes it a 63 yard run. It's a good way to start a game off. Oh boy, no kidding. That penalty didn't seem to hurt him on that play. Fullback Nenig takes it up near the five yard line before he's pulled down. Johansson and Smith on the tackle. A ball down to the six yard line, that's a five yard pickup. Second down and five. Oh, Lutheran Kohler having trouble on the defensive side so far. Howard Grove just ramming it down their throat. Motion. Hansen on a swing pass. Filke had it go right through his hands and then almost picked off by Fiorini. But that pass does go incomplete. And it'll be third down and six. That was very good coverage by the cornerback Farini on that play. It was in great position. Third down and four yards for the Tigers. It's gonna be third and five. Thielke the deep back, Nenig the up back. Good wide receivers left and right. Hansen on a pitch. A lot of blocking up front. Thielke cuts it back. He's close to the end zone and he's in. Touchdown. Elliot Thielke had a 53 yard run to get it down to the 11. Then he takes it in the last six yards for a touchdown. They made that look too easy, Marty. Oh, aren't, that's really true. You're gonna have to stop them on defense. Trent Cott in. He's that good kicker, let's see how he does. Good snap and set. High and deep and through. With 10.41 remaining in the first quarter, Howard's Grove jumps on top, seven to nothing. If you're not helping after school programs, you're really helping to take them away. That wasn't very nice. After school programs, wouldn't you rather be helping? 
Back at Evan Field, uh, Dan, you're going to say something. We cut out. I <laughs> can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those senior, senior moments, Marty. <laughs> Speaking of senior moments, uh, how is it? How's the retirement business? It, it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> when you join our ranks, you're going to really enjoy it. Now, Cott is going to also do the kickoff chores, and uh, Fiorini is the uh, furthest man from the line of scrimmage for uh, Lutheran Kohler. Let's see if he gets a shot at it. And a good, strong kick. It sails into the end zone. That's going to be a touchback, and uh, Lutheran Kohler will have it on the 20. Well, you don't see that very much in high school football, Dan. No, that's a good kick again. Of course, they kick off from the 40-yard line, which helps, but you still need a pretty good leg in order to get in the end zone. There's a head coach, Al Holzheimer, for a Lutheran Kohler. Hey, what's the nickname? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Marty. <laughs> the Blue Crusaders? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Can I? Duco at quarterback. And off to this 13. number 13, running through the line of scrimmage there is uh, Mike Noble, and he's got a pretty nice pickup. If Dale Cahill was black out here a little bit longer, he could have had a little bit more yardage. That was a pretty good play, though. Gain of six yards for Noble. It makes it second down and four. Ball at the 26. And Howard's Grove is in a 5-3 defense. Snap pitch out to uh, Noble again. He's trying to get wide and uh, making a good play out there was number 70, Jimmy Hall. Uh, too much penetration there. Almost like the outside uh, blocker missed, missed something out there. That was a loss of uh, four, actually a loss of five. Makes a third down and nine. I'm assuming this is going to be a passing down for Sheboygan Lutheran Kohler. Kurt Duco at the controls. Also in the backfield with uh, Nobel is uh, Ryan Johansson. With three wide receivers, two of them off to the right side. Looks like a blitz. 33 is blitzing. That was Nenig. Catch is made. But not able to get the first down was Harrison Dale. Got it out to about the 25. It's going to be fourth down and five. Back deep is uh, Andrew Verfurth. He's uh, He can be a handful if he can catch the ball and run because he's got great speed. Kick is away, nice spiral. Verfurth has it on the 40. We got a wall set up, Marty. Oh, he's got some good blocking too. He's around the corner, he's gonna go. Ooh, got it down inside the 10. And uh, I didn't catch the number of the kid who leveled a hit on him, but uh, he took a solid blow. It's gonna be first down for uh, Howard's Grove inside the 10 yard line. I think it was number 85 that made the hit on that play, Marty. Okay. That'd be a, yeah, Blindauer. Let's call it the eight yard line, first and goal at the eight. Oh, fumble. So fumble on the snap, the quarterback got the ball back. Okay, Hanson got her back. So give Hanson a carry and uh, he loses a yard. Second down and goal. Ball spotted right on the 10 yard line. Just inside the 10, so we'll call it the nine. Good shot right down the line by Brian Andrews. He's on our field camera tonight. Hand off to Nenig inside, twisting and turning and getting down near the goal line before he's leveled, but uh, good chunk, good hard running by, by uh, Nenig. Third down and goal. Ball spotted on about the two yard line, so that's a pickup of seven. Eric Backhouse was on the tackle on that play, Marty. 
Nanigan Thielke in the backfield behind Hanson. I don't think they'll be putting it up. Nanig the first back through and he's in very easily. Right through the line. Howard's Grove is definitely offensive line is controlling the defensive line of Sheboygan Lutheran of Kohler at this time. Yeah, I agree with you there. Boy, oh boy. Cot in to kick. He's a been solid on his extra points and kickoff so far tonight. That one is up and through. Almost thought it got blocked. Good penetration, but uh, after or with 7.48 remaining in the first quarter, Howard's Grove has jumped out to a 14-0 lead. Hey, new guy. Shovel, right? Yeah, Rake, and I'm not exactly new. I've seen some action. Yeah, what's your story? Hey, my last gig, I nearly got electrocuted, almost drowned. That guy never called 811 to see if it was safe to dig. Our guy calls every time he digs. It's quick and easy. Any tool can do it. Calling 811 gets your underground utility lines marked for free. It makes every project safer for everyone. Hey, safe digging is no accident. Always call 811 before you dig. Dan, you mentioned about uh, on that punt, you know, setting up the wall on the side as a as a kick coverage team. How do you defense that uh, wall? Well, you're hoping that you have a good scouting report ahead of time so that you can plan to have people over there. And usually a team gets to be most of the time right-handed. And so far, Howard's has had two returns, and uh, one on the kickoff went to the right, and the one on the punt return also went right. All right, another uh, good kick. By Cod, it bounces, taken at about the two-yard line by Fiorini. He's looking to return. He had a ooh. good hit. Wow, he got smacked down by uh, number 60, that was. Gensky. Gensky on the stop. Boy, he laid a, laid a hard hit on uh, Fiorini. Ball spotted on about the 20-yard line. Make it the 15-yard line, pardon me. Again, uh, Lutheran Kohler. 85 yards away, it's a, well, if you don't get any big plays, but it's a long drive, a lot of plays. Duco barking out the signals, gives it to the second back through. A little bit of a scrum before uh, the running back for uh, Lutheran Kohler is brought down. I think that'll probably be uh, novel. Picked up about four yards on the play. That's be second and six, Marty. Yep, second down and six. Ball spotted on about the 19 yard line, just short of the 20. Howard's doing a pretty good job of controlling the line of scrimmage so far on both sides of the ball. Up the middle and uh, not much going there. Howard's had a blitz on the right outside coming in on that one. Noble uh, on the carry and no gain on that play. Makes it third down and six. You had mentioned, I don't think we were back, but you said that the line of scrimmage is really key in a football game and uh, yeah, that's huge right right now, and or in any game it is, and it's definitely definitely Howard's way right now. Third down and six. Another oh, blitz. Right. Nenig, quick out to Dale, and uh, he gets knocking. Pardon me, that's Fiorini. Dominic uh, making a nice catch, but uh, defense right on him. Pickup of about three yards. Makes it uh, fourth down. Fourth and a little less than one, Marty. Let's see if they try a return to the right again this time. Burfirth is back again. He's got a lot of speed. Snap is low. Uh, Good pickup by the uh, punter, but uh, 
The punt wasn't very good. It goes out of bounds in Lutheran Kohler territory at about the 36 yard line. Wow, 11 yard kick. And uh, Howard's has got great field position again. And the way they've been moving the ball at 36 yards isn't going to be very far. Thilke and Nenig behind uh, Joe Hansen. Howard's with a wide receiver off to the right and a slot back uh, to that side. Fake to Nenig. Thilke on the uh, second back through gets it down to about the 31, so a pickup of about five. That was a good tackle by Ryan Johansson. He stayed home, which is very important to do. That's a little counter that Howard's ran back to the left. Second down and five. Uh, the players on the right side for uh, Lutheran Kohler stayed home. They didn't fall yeah. for the fake too much. They did a very good job with that. Wide receivers left and right for uh, Howard's in this set. Fake on the option. And first down run for uh, Joe Hansen. Uh, Howard did a good job of running the option on that play. The quarterback had the option of either keeping it or pitching it, and he decided to keep it for, what, about a 10-yard gain, I think. Ball is spotted right near the 20-yard line. So that was about a 10 or 11-yard pickup, you're right. Hey, they give him 11 on the official call, so we will too. Makes it first down and 10 at the uh, 20. Nenig stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Maybe picked up a half a yard, but good defense on that play by uh, Lutheran Kohler. Zach Frank was on the tackle on that one. He did a good job. The ball spotted at inside the 20, give Nenig a one yard pickup on that play. Second down and nine. Wide receiver off to the left with a slot on the left side. Hansen dropping back, looking, looking. The receiver is wide open, Marty. Oh, nice catch, and in for a touchdown Hansen was the back. slot back. That was Andrew Verfurth, and uh, we hadn't seen anything in those first two games about him, but you know, we knew about his speed, but uh, he showed up on that play. That was a nice throw by Hansen to, to Verfurth on that. He was open by about five yards and he got him the ball. In the end zone, and another touchdown for Howard's Grove, and uh, it's getting to be a runaway already. We still got 347 remaining in the first quarter. I and, snap. Uh, yeah, not a good one, but uh, Cott got the kick up, and no good. Off to the right. But uh, with 347 remaining, Howard's Grove up 20 to nothing. The dream of education beyond high school, the cost can put it out of reach. There is help. We are federal student aid, part of the U.S. Department of Education. Each year we award $80 billion to all eligible students and families. Learn more at federalstudentaid.ed.gov. Don't get left behind. The most costly education is the one not begun. Federal student aid. Start here. Go further. Close up of the uh, Sheboygan Lutheran Kohler team. Our top cameraman is uh, Eric Wiesman. Steve Reiner here helping out with some chores. And uh, our intern tonight is uh, Kohler grad, Spencer Williams. <laughs> Dan gives a thumbs up. You had him as a student, didn't you? <laughs> yes, I did. You had them all at one point <laughs> or another. Cott will be kicking off again. Fiorini deep, that kick uh, should be returned. Fiorini gets it uh, about the five yard line. Trying to get to the outside, but good cut kick coverage by Howard's Grove and he's down. I can believe he's gonna be inside the 15 yard line. Dominic's gotta come up and catch those, Marty. Yeah, he's uh, 
somewhat passive in his approach to uh, returning the kick. I thought Cott did a good job. He had his ball was a little higher on that kick. It was a good kickoff again. Ball spotted on 13-yard uh, line, I believe it is. That's what we'll call it. So it's first and 10. Again, uh, Luther and Cole are deep in their own territory. They're certainly not starting off with good field position. Duco barking out the signals. Gives it to Knobble around the end, but uh, nothing doing. Good penetration by Howard's Grove. Howard's is bringing seven people right now, Marty. The two outside linebackers blitzed on that. So they got a lot of people coming. And Knobble lost two on the play, too. Second down and 12. Ball on the 11. Wide receivers left and right. Fiorini off to the left. Dale off to the right. Duke goal. Looking to get something going. Another blitz by Howards, and they're going to hit him. Sack him back inside the 10-yard line. Well, they just can't do anything. I don't know if he was trying to run that. It looked like he tucked it early, so I, th I thought he was going to run the ball. It wasn't looking like it. he was going to try to pass it at all. But I don't, again, I don't know if that was because the rush was so heavy. But Howards is bringing a lot of people right now. Loss of three on that sack. Again, uh, doesn't really matter. It just goes on the rush yardage anyway. But uh, it's third down and 15. We have a timeout by Lutheran Kohler to try to iron out the offense. They haven't, uh, they haven't done much so far. They had a couple good runs early for about six or four with Knobble there, but uh, we haven't seen much after that. It seems like, uh, you know, every time you're calling blitz and uh, obviously Lutheran Kohler is having a lot of trouble with the blitzes. Yeah, I think just in the interior line right now, their blocking has to pick up or it's going to be a very, very long Both night. The Lutheran and Kohler volleyball teams will be playing in the Sheboygan County Classic Volleyball. And it doesn't help, Marty, that they're not in very good field position here again. It limits your play calling somewhat. You know, and even if you wanted to throw deep, I don't think you could get the time to throw deep. You're no, just in right on now. them too much. If they had something like a screen or a draw, but you know, even that right now, I don't know how well it worked because they haven't gotten any of the other pass part of the passing game going though. Well, as we return to action, the ball is back on the eight yard line. It's third down and 15. And Howard's Grove has been uh, all over the field on defense. Brett Duco ducks, ducks underneath the center. There's a blitz again. Right up the middle for Knobble. You know, sometimes you can catch them on a quick hitter, but they're not able to do that either. Knobble brings it out about uh, three yards out to 11. And it's going to be fourth down and 11 yards to go. said that quite a few times already. Fourth and long. <laughs> yeah. Well, in the last time, uh, Howard's came very close to blocking the punt. Catch the number of the kid who's doing the punting. Is that number 80? 80, Dan Salzbrunner? Oh, I think it's 85. Okay. Blindauer. Nice snap that time. Ooh, and blocked. it is blocked. You called it, Marty. Number 84. Blindauer's kick is blocked by Jason Blass. Blass. All right, Jason Ploss makes the block and the recovery, and Howard's Grove is going to have it uh, knocking on the door again. And it only gets worse. Now they have this uh, mercy rule. Trouble is, that doesn't start till the second half. <laughs> it's going to be first and goal. Ball spotted on about the, uh, we'll call it the two-yard line. It's probably only the one, but it's uh, very close. Thielke. Oh, it's Hanson. Uh, Hanson on a quick out, and it's knocked away. A good defense played there by Dominic Fiorini. You know, Fiorini's kind of running like you walk, hunched over. <laughs> <laughs> but I have an excuse. Or a yeah, reason. right. Hanson so far tonight is one for three, but his uh, one completion is a 19-yarder to uh, Verfurth for a touchdown. Anyway, it's second and goal. Good shot of uh, Andy Hansen's son, Joe. 
Pitch out to Thielke, and he goes in untouched. That was easy. Too easy. Well, do you go for two because you missed the last extra point? I don't think I'd go for two, Marty. <laughs> Cod coming in to do the kicking. <laughs> As I was saying to you before, though, you know, we always have our eye on the kicker, but you need a person that snaps the ball back, uh, and you need somebody to put the ball down for the kicker. It's three parts to this. A little better snap. The kick is up, and that one is good. Right down the middle with, uh, we're still not out of the first quarter, Dan. It's 136 remaining, and it's 27 to nothing, Howard's Grove. Wow. Wait, we will. Wait, 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 wait, we will. We will be strong. Wait, wait, we will stay strong. Wait, wait, we will protect ourselves. Wait. Back at Kohler, Kohler's Ebon Field where uh, Howard's Grove is uh, making this into a laugh or it's 27 to nothing and we're not in, out of the first quarter yet. Uh, I was going to mention when I was at uh, Chilton High School, it was, it was a, maybe a year or two before I got there, they had a team that was undefeated, untied, and unscored upon. And uh, one of the weeks they were winning a, a, a game similar to this and uh, their second string back for uh, Chilton was back of the week in the conference because he got so much playing time and gained so many yards. This one's not as deep. Knobble has it. Good run. And he's going to get it out in the best field position uh, Lutheran Kohler has had. It's out over the 30-yard line. Maybe that can get him going now, Marty. Well, you hope so. The fans on this side certainly want to see something positive. It hasn't been a good start for uh, Lutheran Kohler. They've uh, really given up a lot of yards. Big plays, especially on returns. And that's what's important with a good football team, though. You have good defense and offense, but if you have the good special teams that go along with it, you can go a long ways with that. Okay, wide receivers left and right. Noble the deep back. Duco at quarterback. It's been there all night. Is it a little counter? I was, I was thinking the same thing. I couldn't see it. There's so many bug, dead bugs on my window here. You, you get to look through the open glass. Brings the ball to the 34-yard line. on the carry. Okay. Thanks for the help on that because I didn't see. Second down, pick up a three yards on the play, makes it second down and seven. Looking to pop a big one. Fumble. Looks like a fumble and a big pile up right in the middle. We'll have to see who got it. Howard's Grove recovered it. Probably was a, like, although I couldn't tell you for sure, it looked like it was a, probably a botched uh, snap. quarterback snap and uh, fumble was lost. Well, pretty soon our job is going to get a lot harder. They start bringing all these subs from the, uh, from you know both squads. We got 44 seconds left here in the quarter. First down and 10, ball spotted. At about the 34-yard line. Stand-up pass. And a nice catch and a little bit of a run by uh, Eric Marginovich. See, I know that Marginovich name. She used to teach over at uh, at Jefferson. Oh, okay. That's why it just rolls right off my tongue. You're doing very well with it. <laughs> It isn't always like that, let me tell you. I thought that was a good pass by Hanson again, too. He's been really uh, on target this evening. Most of his balls have been thrown very well. Second down and about five. Fake. Hanson. 
Pretty good defense played that time. Fiorini coming up to make the stop. Osladell did a good job of helping on the option there. And that'll be the end of the first quarter. At the end of one, it's 27 to nothing. Howard's Grove. Some dogs fetch and roll over. Some dogs take you to Spain and shopping for refrigerators. Help you get through grad school. Start your own business. Go on hikes in the Grand Canyon. Some dogs you trust with your life every day. Being partners with a guide dog is having the freedom to do what you want in life. Nothing more, nothing less. And with your help, nothing need ever change that. Call 1-888-884-DOGS or visit guidedogs.com. Guy infield hit. There you see Chopper 4 covering tonight's ball game. Uh, just before I left the house, we were watching the news on Channel 4, and they popped up on the screen all the different uh, fields they're going to be visiting, and this game was one of them. They're also going to be, uh, I'm not sure if the game is at Cedar Grove, but I know that the uh, game involves Cedar Grove. So they're coming up north tonight. We're always uh, happy to see them. Yeah, really. As I was saying before, Marty, any time a team runs an option, the defensive team is usually going to have somebody assigned to the quarterback, somebody to the dive back, and somebody to the pitch back. And Sheboygan, Lutheran, Kohler did a much better job on that last play. Nenig and Thielke in the backfield. Uh, Nenig the offset back. And a good pass and catch. Catch is made by Jason Ploss. And uh, we'll have to see if that's a uh, first down or not. Looks like fourth down, Marty. Yeah, fourth and uh, fourth and about two only. A gain of three yards on that play. Hanson ducks under center, and he keeps it, oh, moves man. the pile forward. Boy, picked up a good five yards on that run inside the 20-yard line. He had good leg drive on that, Marty, and his center must have been doing a pretty good job. Ball is spotted inside the 20 at the 19-yard line. Give uh, Hanson again a six on the play. Thielke in motion. Slant pass is complete. And going into the end zone for Howard's Grove is David Wurtz. Oh, man. He was wide open there. Well, I think that little bit of motion, you know, must have drew somebody out of position because he was definitely wide open. Maybe we can get a replay of that, Scott. That was really easy. And once again, Marty, I thought the ball was thrown very well. Yeah, he was right on target. There's the replay of it. I kind of caught the end of it, so we didn't see what how the defense reacted to the motion man. Strong kick by Cod is up and good. With the 10.56 remaining until halftime, it's 34 to nothing. I recycle and refurbish old computers to help preserve our environment. I got involved. I boosted tourism in my farm community by painting 55 barn quilts. I got involved. I enjoy gardening and love delivering a fresh supply of produce and flowers to a local shelter. I got involved. Young volunteers have a winning spirit that we think is worth celebrating. Middle and high school students, ask your school principal about applying for a Prudential Spirit of Community Award. Volunteer. Uh, back at Evan Field, and uh, if you're a Sheboygan Lutheran Kohler fan, uh, this is going to be a long night. The 
There's Steve Reiner in the truck. That picture being brought to you by Brian Andrews. Brian, you might be fired after tonight for that shot. <laughs> You're good, it's a good thing Kerry is in here. All righty. Fiorini back deep. Kick by Cott. Fiorini comes up and grabs it on about the 15. Trying to get to the outside. Good coverage by Howard's Grove. Oh, they just swarmed to the ball. It's very good, very good coverage by Howard's on that. First and 10. 23 yard line is the starting point. Uh, the best starting position uh, Lutheran Kohler had was uh, at the 32 the last time they had it. They just got to find something, Marty, to get it going. Yeah, just, you know, something that they can hang their hat on. I, I, it's obvious they're not going to win the ball game, but uh, something that they can feel good about. You're right. Duco trying to sneak, you know, hopefully to catch him off guard, but uh, that didn't work. Genski was on the tackle for Howard's. Picked up a yard. It's second down and nine. Ball spotted on the 24-yard line. Clock is running with 10:20 uh, remaining until halftime. Knobel the deep back. Long snap, Duco drops straight back, quick out. Ooh. Almost a one-handed grab made by Harrison Dale, but the pass does fall incomplete. He needs a little more time to throw the ball there. They didn't give him much time. Actually, I was thinking, Dan, that probably was a, about as good a pass call as you could make given the situation. You gotta almost do the quick outs or something that's uh, gonna happen quickly because you're right, they're not getting a lot of time. Yeah, that definitely was a quick pattern. To get about a three-step drop. Yeah, and then the two. problem is, you know, if you got fairly good coverage, even if you make the catch, it's uh, only for a short gain. And right now it's third and nine again. Another long third down play. Duco straight back. Has to almost throw it away. It's way over the head. No, you might have caught it. There's a second receiver second there. Second receiver back there did make the catch. Harrison Dale. Holy cow. Well, that gives them a first down, Marty. We can get something going here. Are the hometown fans giving them the Bronx cheer? <laughs> <laughs> uh, if my memory serves me correct, I think that's their first down of the evening. I think you're right, Marty. Ball spotted right on the 35-yard line. He had a little more time that time. Did a little bit of movement in the backfield too. To rush and making the play in the backfield. And then we get a flag come in late. I think it's gonna be for piling on. Dassel was there for Howard's on the stop. Well, first. you could just, you know, we had a good use on our side. We could see him, you know, edging up and uh, well, he came hard and make a great stop. Penalty is on Howard's because they're talking Sheboygan Lutheran Kohler. Well, a stop was made at the 29-yard line, which was meeting a loss of six. So referee Lyle Schneider in your so picture right now. Personal foul on uh, Howard's Grove. Better say that prayer again. <laughs> Another first down. No, it's Balls. not a first down. Oh. That's right, because it was a six yard loss. The 15 yard gain makes it uh, second down and one. Ball on the 30, 44 yard line. Quick out, nice catch by Fiorini, slips by one tackler and gets it out into Howard's Grove territory at about the 47 yard line. Morgan was on the tackle for Howard's Grove number 30. 
pick up the nine yards on the play. Well, that's two first downs in a row here, Marty. Yeah. And they're doing it, they're doing it through the air. On this drive, they've uh, thrown the ball three times and run it two. Two of the three passes have been completions. Two wide receivers off to the left. And offset back is Richardson, and he flinches, and I think we might get illegal procedure. Nope, no, we got a timeout. Timeout on the field with uh, 8.38 remaining until halftime. It's Howard's Grove 34, Lutheran Kohler nothing. Explore her grandeur. Appreciate her beauty. Protect her for tomorrow. Recycle your old rechargeable batteries. Call 877-2-RECYCLE or visit us online at calltorecycle.org. Hey, you get a good shot of the press box. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> Eric Wiesman up on top, running the camera. That's, there's Dan. That's the guy you want to see. All righty, first and 10 ball on the 47 yard line. Howard's, uh, pardon me, Lutheran Kohler on the move. Duco, second back is Nobble. And he gets it up to about the 45, a short gain, two yards maybe. Second down and eight. Clock running, 8 to uh, 13 remaining. Richardson, the, or pardon me, Johansson, the offset back. It almost looked like he moved again. Quick out to Dale, and he's wrapped up back at the 50. It's going to be a five yard loss. Good tackle by Dassel. Ball spotted on the 50. Rick Dassel of Howard did a great job on the coverage on that one. Third down and about 13 to go. This would be a good place for a screen, Marty. Let's see what they do. Do go back, quick out, over the head of the intended receiver, Harrison Dale. Duco's got to do a better job of getting, he had time that time. If he'd get his feet set a little better first before he throws, he, he Have a better opportunity of hitting that receiver. Much better. But I think he's felt so much heat all night that he had to try to get rid of the ball real fast. Thielke is back deep to receive this punt. There you get a good shot of Elliott. Well, that's Verfurth, pardon me. Good shot of Andrew. Blocked again. And it blocked again. Great pressure by Howard's Grove. Oh, man, a life they're just coming right through there. Wow. Boy, what are you going to do? Got to do a better job up front. Well, that's where the game's played, Marty. It's going to be first and 10. The ball is going to be, uh, they're going to work with a short field again. We'll call it the 39 yard line. All right, Howard's Grove, wide receivers left and right. Verfurth off to the left. And I think we have a player lined up offside. And I think it's uh, Merginovich. He's like, what do you mean? Come on. That's number four down at the bottom of your screen, fans. <laughs> I think he's still wondering about the call. <laughs> so is the coach. Let's talk about it. <laughs> All right, Brian, that's enough.
Ball is back to the 44-yard line. And usually the five-yard penalty. Usually the rep, uh, Don't think kind of. Well, once you step offside, though, it's too late. Right. Nenig through the middle. Oh, nice. He's going to get the first down and uh, a little bit more down near the 30-yard line. Well, maybe it'd be a little short, but it's a nice run. He looks like a good power runner. Yeah. It is a first down. Ball down to the 30-yard line, a 14-yard pickup. Make it the 29. So it's a 15-yard pickup. First back through Nanak again. He gets wrestled down. That was Dasso, number 34. Rick Dasso on the carry. Giving Nenig a little bit of a break. Adam Gassner was on the tackle. Hit him down by the ankles. Second down and eight. Two-yard pickup. Ball at the 27. Verfurth off to the right this time. He's the speedy wide receiver. It's an option. Good pitch out. And... Nenig playing the... Uh, Deep back on that play. He did a good job with defending the option again. Zach Frank was on the tackle. Ball spotted inside the 25 down to about the 23. Pickup of uh, four yards. Nenig the deep back and whistle just before the snap of the ball. Illegal procedure on Howard's. Coach Schmidt uh, can't be too happy. They've uh, accumulated quite a few penalties tonight, Howard's Grove has. Yeah, you never, as a coach, you never like penalties because there's so much of as mental mistakes and you're constantly practicing not to have Do you have think those. the scoreboard has something to do with that? The, the fact that they're just uh, you know, so far ahead? Possible, but I don't think ever you should have excuse for mental mistakes like that. Hanson back. Ooh. Big rush. Gets away from one Lutheran core defender, and then he's knocked out of bounds at about the 25-yard line. Freeney. Knocked him out of bounds. Hanson uh, showing a little athleticism there. Gets it down to the, uh, about the, is that the 30, 24 yard line? Now this is going to be a long field goal attempt here if they try it. Caught in. His holder is uh, Elliot Thielke. You now there'd be a guy to pick it up and just run with it. Be a 40 yarder. It was a good snap. Kick is short. And no good on the field goal attempt. With 5.03 remaining until halftime. There you see it, Howard's Grove on top, 34 to nothing. of a gain there. Johansson on the carry. First play happened from the uh, 20 as it was a touchback and then the ball gets placed out at the 20 yard line but uh, Johansson lost two yards on the play makes it second down and 12. Was that supposed to be a counter Marty? I didn't see. You know it was it seemed like a very slow developing play and then Howard's had great pressure and it's hard to tell. 
Looks like an unbalanced line almost, but uh, I think it's just a tight end to that side. Quick out to Farini, trying to slip by one tackler, but a great tackle made by Nenig, 33. Stealing your thunder, Dan. I think he was all-conference uh, linebacker last year, that Nenig. Yeah. He's supposed to be a very tough kid. Pick up a three yards on the play, makes it third down and nine. Ball spotted at the 21 yard line. There you see the back of uh, Al Holzheimer. It's been a long night for him. Nenig faking the blitz, now he drops into coverage. Well, a little miscommunication on that play. And that's going to make it fourth down. Not a good situation here. No. They've had two punts blocked already tonight. You know the worst thing about the whole situation, Dan? I haven't been keeping up with my stats. <laughs> I have to do this at halftime, try to figure out who's got what. I got it all written down. I just haven't been keeping the totals as we move along. Assistant coaches for uh, Lutheran Kohler are Paul Edelman, Kevin Webster, Roger Jones, John Westland. Fred Bethke. Good snap. That kick is away, and a high deep kick. Fumbled by Fielke, he takes it at the 40. That's Verfurth. He's up over the 50. He's gonna go a long ways. He might go all the way. Slips by another tackler. Slips by another tackler. And he's into the end zone. That's a 60 yard punt return for a touchdown by Andrew Verfurth. And Marty had a chance to see his speed on that one. Yes. Once he got the corner, it was all over. Now, uh, if you guys follow, you know that, uh, there you see him pick it up right at the 40. Oh, what nice a block. block. There's another one. He was running by people at this point, and he slips by one tackler and slips by another, and one great run. 60-yard punt return. High snap. But the kick is good. Yep. You had mentioned in the opening, you know, that, that speed is, is, you know, and you mentioned with the linemen, but, you know, a lot of times that speed translates onto your defense, and uh, it's almost more important than having good size. Yeah. See, uh, speed, if you can move and uh, you're quicker than the person across from you, uh, most of the time you're going to have the advantage. The threshold for a running clock is 35 points, and uh, Howard's Grove has that. It's uh, 317 remaining until halftime. It's 41 to nothing, and uh, all Howard's Grove. And uh, they've looked impressive. Very impressive, Marty. Man, life. Roger Jones. <laughs> He's a little disgruntled. Things just not going their way tonight, and I guess that's what happens when you play talented football teams. What would your brother Tom say about a game like this? <laughs> I think he'd be shaking his head. <laughs> Has it teed up there, you get a good shot of uh, Trent. Kick is taken on the 15 yard line. Go. I think that was Harrison Dale. Gets it out to the uh, 29 yard line. That's where it's gonna be spotted, first and 10. Alex Cotet. Tet from uh, Howard's was on the tackle, number 20. Fiorini is wide left, Dale wide right. Duco still the quarterback. Johansson the up back, and Nobel the deep back. A little bit of protection there, trying Ooh. to go deep to Fiorini. He, got he makes the catch. Are they going to count it? Oh, man. It looked like he had a foot down on inside the line. But uh, the referee didn't see it that way, and uh, there you see Al Holzheimer talking to the official. Come on, you got to give us that call, 41 to nothing. 
He probably <laughs> thought he was pushed out. Let's look here, Marty. Watch his feet. Well, it's hard to tell, but yeah. give him the completion. Come on. <laughs> Great replay on there, Scott. Well, that, was, that was very nice. The replay part. The call by the official, not so good. Second down and 10. Good protection that time for uh, Duco to get that pass off. They're blitzing on the outside. Fiorini cutting in over the middle. He's got the completion and the first down and uh, get it up just over the 40 yard line. Make count a play, a pickup of 11 yards. Dukow had a good release on that one. And gonna get a look at it here on replay. Man at the top of the screen is a receiver cutting over the middle. Nice catch and actually the tackle is what pushed him forward for the first down. We'll take it. Two forty and counting until halftime. It's forty-one to nothing. Howard's Grove. Duco's got him on the move again. Nenig right up the middle. Good pickup. Passes incomplete. It looked like the intended receiver was uh, Eric Backhaus. Now you coached uh, nineteen years out here, and uh, it certainly had to hurt you quite a bit because. Uh, Kohler struggled, you know, for a couple years before they uh, combined with uh, Lutheran Kohler in terms of having a team. Yeah, it was very difficult for me, Marty, but, uh, you know, things change, and uh, that's... The Can I say the dirty S word? <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, movement. Uh, lineman at the end of the line, away from us, uh, jumped. You could see his head pop up. That'll be a five yard penalty. Second down and 15 now. The dirty S word, by the way, is soccer, in case you fans didn't, <laughs> didn't know what I was talking about. Looks like another blitz. Yeah, good pickup too. Then it going right up the middle. Good Fiorini goal. slips by one. He's got the first down down the sideline. Boy, you could see his speed on that play. Knocked out of bounds at the 47 yard line. Trent Cott knocked him out of bounds for Howard's Grove. 18 yard pickup. Picked out. Fiorini slips by one guy. Runs past another before he's pushed out of bounds. Just over two minutes remaining until halftime, 2 2 Screen, Screen pass, Nobles got it. And he's gonna get it down inside the 40. What was that screen pass you were looking yep. for? Did it, they, they ran it very well, Marty, execute it. Second down, ball spotted at the 39 yard line. Rick Dasso, number 34, was on the tackle on that play. Let's see if the Sheboygan Lutheran Kohler can get a first down here again. Second and two. Hand off the novel. He's hit hard, but I think he's, well, he's going to be close to first down yardage. Let's see where they spot it. 110 and counting. Let's see if they stop the clock for the measurement. Oh, uh, they're short. about a yard short. Clock running under a minute now. Third down one. They're going to have to hustle it up a little bit. They want to get a score before halftime. Under. 50 seconds. Long snap count. Then it comes straight up the middle and they're gonna get Duco way back outside the 45 yard line. And now we get a timeout. Yep. 
I know you didn't want to do any coaching up here, but I almost thought they should have called a timeout when they didn't get the first down. Yeah, we had two two timeouts left, I think. And uh, no, that that was this was their last oh, timeout. Was that their the last one? Said, yeah. Okay. A big loss, loss of almost uh, eight yards on the play. Well, I think what they were doing, Marty, was uh, probably saving that timeout because if they would have got the first down there, it was third and short, then you still have a timeout left. Did. They don't stop uh, the clock on on first downs in high school football. It's going to be fourth down. There's 32 seconds remaining until halftime. And uh, Lutheran Kohler is going for it. Fiorini spread wide left. Dale wide right, Duco under center. Same cast of characters. Let's see if uh, Lutheran Kohler can get the first down. Pretty good coverage. Dale trying to make the catch can and it's intercepted. Verfurth making the interception. You're gonna see it. Dale went up high to make and actually tipped the ball and then the uh, defender was able to come down with it. Well, actually a pretty long possession that time by Lutheran Kohler. They weren't able to uh, do anything with it or I shouldn't say they weren't able to get it in the end zone. They did tack on some first downs and uh, Hansen takes a knee and that's going to end the first half. Yeah, that hurt him, Marty, with that third short, and they didn't get that first down. They had something going, and maybe they would have been able to take it into the end zone. Now you'd mentioned about Howard's Grove controlling the line of scrimmage. Now, Lutheran Kohler did a pretty good job of moving the ball with the pass, but they still had trouble mounting any kind of a running attack. To me, any time, if you want to win games, you've got to be able to have a good running attack. And the passing is uh, something that will, can help that, but... Uh, you control games by a good running game. All right, that's halftime. Howard's Grove on top, 41 to nothing. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll have some halftime entertainment for you. Sure, my neighbors, Gene and Louise, they may be superheroes with superpowers, but that doesn't make them so super at saving energy and money. Honey. I may not be able to harness the power of the elements, but I save significant cash and help the environment with appliances, electronics, and windows featuring the Energy Star label. So discover your own energy-saving superpowers. Go to ase.org slash consumers. Mom, Dad's making fondue again.
The world has changed a lot since 1970. That's when Congress created the Securities Investor Protection Corporation, SIPC. For 37 years, we've remained focused on one thing, helping investors in the unlikely event that their brokerage firm encounters difficulties. We've helped more than 600,000 investors recover over $14 billion in assets. We're the Securities Investor Protection Corporation. There for you then, here for you now. Listen up, listen up. You're a teenage boy, you wanna have sex? Think, 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 man. Think about this, it's not just you. Think about the other people involved. Think about the girl, her family, her thoughts, her future. You know, she has goals. What about the respect for the values that your parents gave you? What about the little kids in your neighborhood who happen to look up to you? Think about that before you take that step. Think about yourself. Think about the things you want to do. Don't you have goals? How about thinking ahead? Just think. And wait. Just wait. Your heart rate's a little fast. Cause of death, acute myocardial infarction. Have you tried a weight loss program? Likely caused by type 2 diabetes and heart disease. Still smoking? Victim's lungs are black and scarred. You can get a physical exam now. Or you can get one later. Talk to your doctor about a physical. Learn how to lower your risk for type 2 diabetes and heart disease and live a healthier life. Cordless power tools and rechargeable batteries help you do projects all over the house. Inside, outside, they let you work anywhere. But did you know that by recycling old rechargeable batteries, you can help protect the environment? It's true. When they no longer hold a charge and need to be replaced, old rechargeable batteries should be recycled. It's easy and it's free. Recycle your old rechargeable batteries wherever you buy cordless power tools. Go to calltorecycle.org to find a collection site near you. clock and uh, over here at uh, Eben Field in Kohler, Wisconsin where uh, Howard's Grove leads as we're concluding halftime festivities. 41 to nothing. We have some halftime stats and Dan, I would like you to comment after I get done with this first group. Howard's Grove in the first half was 4 for 6 passing for 51 yards. They had 115 yards rushing for 166 total, but uh, that really doesn't tell the whole story. But it can be misleading, Marty, because they had so much yards on, uh, on return yardage. He had that, uh, Ferverth had that punt return for about 60 yards for a touchdown. He's also had great returns on kickoffs, and so their yardage would be much greater than They probably that. could tack on another 150 yards to that on return yardage. Uh, one thing that isn't misleading is the rushing total by uh, Sheboygan Lutheran Kohler. They had minus six rushing yards, 57 passing yards, uh, pardon me, 63 yards passing for a total of 57 yards. And uh, that minus six rushing, what does that tell you? Yeah, like I said before, Marty, you always got to get a running game going and uh, you can control a game a lot better if you do that. And uh, they're definitely having a hard time moving the ball on the ground, but they did have some success moving it in the air. Uh, Duco had a good first half for a Lutheran Kohler. He hit on 9 of 15 passes with one interception. And uh, with a long of 18 yards, the Fiorini, uh, he's a dangerous receiver. He's got good speed. Yes, uh, once he gets the ball, it's quite obvious that uh, he can take it someplace. Uh, I don't know if I, I think I did mention that uh, Hansen was 4 for 6. Uh, Elliot Thielke uh, had a 53-yard run and totaled 66 yards in the first quarter. He didn't even carry the ball in the second quarter. No, it, I think Nenik probably carried it more in the second quarter, and uh, they have a pretty good combination there because Nenik seems more of a power runner, and Thielke's more of a speed back. Nenik had uh, five carries in the half for 29 yards. Uh, Hansen had six carries for uh, 18 yards, and uh, toting the ball once was uh, Rick Dasso. He had a gain of two yards. Uh, let's see here. Lutheran Kohler... Nobel carried the ball nine times for uh, only three yards total. And uh, well, that just goes to show how Howard's Grove control the line of scrimmage. 
that's where it's at in these games, Marty, or any football game. Is if whoever controls the line of scrimmage uh, most likely is going to come up on top at the end. Uh, Duco had a minus seven yards in the in the second quarter rushing. Uh, part of that was a result of a sack of eight yards. Uh, you had mentioned, uh, I think I heard this once, uh, Dan Yedis at Falls said that he, he did a little study and uh, teams that made the playoffs went down to Madison for the championships. They averaged like about six or seven passes a game. And uh, of course that's a product of Right. You, you got, again, you have the good running, and we used to, when I was coaching too, Marty, we did a lot of running from the Woody Hayes School, even though we ran a lot of option, but we did run a lot of play action passes, which I considered was like running the ball, little safer passes. I mean, you can't just do it all by the run. You do have to have the passing because that does help the running game. And, uh, well, I think pro football obviously is a whole lot different than, than football at this level. You know, I think in, in there you can set up your running game based on your passing, but in the high school level, it's pretty hard to do. Yeah, usually you want, what you want to do is, again, establish that running game, and if you follow teams around the area or around the state, you're going to find out the ones that are there year in and year out are the ones that are able to control the line of scrimmage and run the ball. I think a, a, another point to bring out in this game that is quite obvious is that what's hurting Sheboygan Lutheran Kohler a lot is the special teams play right now. Oh, man. And it's not just from the defensive line of scrimmage, it's or offensive line of scrimmage. And a lot of times people aren't aware how important special team play is. And I think this game really is showing that because Howard Howard's has definitely controlled it. I think also when when you get into a special team situation and you're the receiving team, like Howard's Grove has been, you're kicking into an open area that allows those fast guys, you know, to get ahead of steam and. You know, run by some of those uh, coverage guys. Yeah, and yeah, and Howard's definitely has a lot of speed. I like their <laughs> their team speed is very good, and when you have a couple burners and they see that opening and then they can get there, that uh, really makes it uh, a lot nicer for your team when you have something well, like you that. You mentioned it in the opening. You know, it isn't just fast guys in the in the backfield. It's fast guys in the line, and uh, especially if you got them in the defensive line, that's a pretty big advantage. Well, we're getting ready to kick it off. Uh, the threshold, I mentioned this in the first half, is 35 points. And uh, once you have that big of a lead, the clock runs in the second half. It only stops for timeouts and uh, an injury. And there's probably another item in there. But uh, right now, we'll have a running clock. Unless uh, Luther and Kohler can... Uh, Get that lead or that deficit under 40, under 35 points. And you see the deep man for uh, Verfurth. Onside kick is taken by Nenig. He's up over the 40, 45, 50, down to the 40, and then he's knocked down inside the 40 at about the 38. Well, even <laughs> what looked like a little pooch kick didn't work yeah. out. Once again, uh, special teams play there. Advantage for Howard's Grove. Well, Nenig took it at about the 30. Let's just call it the 35 just for argument's sake. He got it about a 24, 27-yard return on a pooch kick. All right, and I think we're going to go to work now. They got some different numbers in there. Hanson, I believe, is still at quarterback. Nenig, second back through is Thielke. They still do have the starters in there. And Thielke gets a big gain down inside the 30-yard line. Another first down for uh, Howard's Grove. Get it down to about the 27-yard line, pickup of 11. We're going to try and keep track, keep her running totally here instead of trying to get it all done at, at halftime. Then again, uh, Thielke in the backfield behind Hansen. Wide receivers left and right for Howard's. First back through is Nenig. And he pounds forward near the 20 yard line. Good pile up. You see some of those uh, football players. Ball is spotted just outside the 20 yard line. We'll give Nenig a gain of six on the play. Tommy Rush, my brother-in-law, he's just here watching. Ball spotted on the 21. 
Wide to the right is uh, Wirtz. Got to keep an eye on him. He had a 19 yard touchdown pass or catch. Was that option? Yeah, that, and he did get the pitch away. And then in on the stop, I think that's 64. Didn't catch that it, was but 64. they played it well. Near off. Actually, uh, Sheboygan Lutheran Kohler did a, a good job of defending the option that time again, Marty. You'd call that a number of times in the first half. They've done pretty good with the option play. It's uh, a lot of the other stuff that they've had trouble with. Third down and six, ball on the 23-yard line. Hansen, Joe Hansen under center. He moved. Drop straight back. Could be picked Quick off. It is. Oh, Fiorini stepped in front, but wasn't able to come away with it. He was in very good position to make that interception. <laughs> oh, boy. And, and he, he would have had a touchdown, Marty. That's for sure. Ooh, that was a dangerous pass by Joe Hansen. Here he is. Oh. <laughs> It's like he knew it was coming, too. He yeah. really read it well. Fourth down, six. Trent oh. Cox, num Trent Cott, number 11, is in. They're going to try another field goal. This one is going to take place from the 25, I believe it is. So make it a 35-yard attempt. Good snap. Got her, Marty. Wow. That's okay. impressive. Actually, I think it was a 40-yarder. 40 40-yarder, 40 you're right. My numbers were off. And he had plenty of leg on that one, Marty. Yeah, he had room to spare. You're right. You know, you're really a nice guy. I mean, you you saw right away that I called it a 35-yarder. You knew it was 40, and you didn't butt in and say, hey, stupid. It's on the 40 or a 30 for a 40-yarder. I would never do that, Marty. But you thought it, right? No, I didn't even think that. <laughs> I would have. You got a you got a harder job than I do here. <laughs> well, you get to look through the the you know there is no glass, and I've got all these bugs here in front of me on this double glass. Actually, I think they did that on purpose. <laughs> it's hard enough. I can't see. <laughs> we got Farini deep again. I think. Yep. Yep. Number two. Now he was pretty. Uh, Nonchalant in taking a first couple of those kickoffs, and then he got a little more aggressive later in the half. Cott, no relation to Jim Cott, the Hall of Fame pitcher. Or is he in the Hall of Fame? He should be. Close. Taking at about the six or seven, I think. He's got room. around He's the got corner. Room. Cott missed him, nice block. and then he's finally taken down at the 45-yard line. That was about a 50-yard return. Zach Morgan made a nice tackle for Howard's Grove on that return. We had a chance to see a little Farini's uh, speed on that. Well, they mark it at the 46, so it's still a great return. It's going to be first and 10, Lutheran Kohler. They had a hard time controlling the line of scrimmage in the first half. Let's see how they do here in the second. Wide receivers left and right. Novel a deep back. Johansson the up back. Second back through. Novel, he's got a little bit of running room. He gets it inside the 45 to about the 43. Plus number 84 from Howards is on the tackle. And you give uh, Novel a two yard pickup. Second down and eight. Running back is nailed at the line of scrimmage, Kurt Stilo. His first carry of the night, a no gainer. Well, he got stung hard, huh, Dan? Looked like Brunner on the tackle there, number 50. Make it third down, remains eight yards to go. Ball on the 44 yard line. A 
Well, they threw a pass, a screen pass in the first half that got him good yardage. Let's see if uh, what they come up with this time. Nenig looking to blitz, then he backs off. Quick out to Dale, he's got it inside the 35 to about the 33, but it's a completion. Duco had a three-step drop again, so that way he can get rid of the ball more quickly. And was able to complete it. Call at the 34-yard line, pick up a 10 yards. Forty-four to nothing, Howard's Grove on top. But again, uh, Lutheran Kohler mounting a bit of a drive. They had two of them towards the end of the first half. Stilo, second back through, gets it inside the 35. Inside the 30, I should say. Stilo's second carry. He goes for about five yards on that play. Nice pickup. Ball spotted on the 29 yard line. Eric Backhouse, the tight end on the right side. Duco, second back through. Kept no, it. fake into the line and he kept it, you're right. And a good block out on the corner before he's knocked out of bounds inside the 20. Boy, you had me fooled, Dan. They did a good job of faking. That Are was you going to see it? Watch the fake. And I think Eric Backhouse, number 12, makes a good block on it. Hey, put it on his hip. Watch number 12. You can see him on your screen. Boom. Yeah, you're right. Good call, Dan. Where's the ball on the 13? About? Uh, yeah, pretty close to that. A 16-yard gain. Ball spotted on the 13. And somebody moved on the line of scrimmage, I believe. Might be on about the 17, I think, Marty. 17. There's a penalty, though. Now you got it down close to the 13. And we get a penalty. Another one on Howard's Grove. They've had a few tonight. It's going to make it first and five. Ball spotted on about the 12. Boy, a lot of room out here for Dale to do a slant pattern to the middle. Second back through a Stilo. Uh, not much going no, there. No gain there. Kurt Stilo, uh, no gain. We're going to give him a no gainer on that. Do you see how Dale was spread way out? You know, he could have done that slant yeah, pattern to the middle. There's nobody there. Big space there for him. And the uh, defensive back was uh, you know, even up. It certainly wasn't on the inside shoulder. At least it didn't look like it. Dale wide right again. And that defender is... Uh, He's inside of him. A little bit now, yeah. Give it to Knobble, but he's not going to get anything. We'll be kind and give him a no gain, but I actually think he might have lost a half a yard or so. Second down play, nets him no yard, makes it third down and five. Boy, oh boy. Oh, they actually lost on that, Marty. Yeah, you're right, it's back to the back a few. He lost about three yards, actually. Back to the 15. Straight back, quick. Trying to get Dale deep. Pushes off, and he's got it for the touchdown. Nice play. Looked like he might have shoved off the defender. Good no call by the official. Nice pass and catch. Dale. Gonna... Let's see it here, Marty. Went onto the outside shoulder, I think. Yeah. There it is. Yeah, nice catch. 15 yard reception for a TD. And Lutheran Kohler on the board.
Kick is uh, blocked. No good. So with 156 remaining, it's 44 to 6. And you know what sent that up? Sent, uh, set, set that it up. up? Yeah, for Sheboygan, Lutheran, Kohler was that good return by Farini. Yep, you're right. And by doing that, they had good field position and then they were able to establish a drive and score. While all insurance companies should provide the foundation for financial protection, unfortunately, some do not. There are fake insurance companies that promise peace of mind when trouble strikes, but actually fall apart like a house of cards when it's time to pay a claim. I'm Walter Bell, president of the National Association of Insurance Commissioners. Before signing a policy, I urge you to stop, call, and confirm with your state insurance department to be sure you're dealing with a licensed company or go to NEIC.org. A good shot of the fans here watching the ball game. Uh, it's nice to get on the board, but uh, boy, that uh, total of 44 to six is uh, tough to take. But you know, late in the second quarter, they started to play better, at least in terms of offense. They're moving the ball a little bit. And Another poocher. Oh, almost a face mask. Jason Ploss, I think, made that catch, that short return. First down and 10 for Howard's Grove, and it's way up to the uh, 40, call it the 44 yard line. That means they only gotta go 56 yards to the end zone. Again, great position for Howard's Grove. Well, you know what they're doing, Marty? They're doing that on purpose because of the returns of the first half. <laughs> well, so they're not getting long returns, but they're still giving them great field position. Caught between a rock and a hard place. Sure are. Hanson on a pitch out to a uh, running back, Colin Cornis on the carry. And he picks up uh, five on that play. Here's where the work comes in, Dan. <laughs> Second down and five. Hanson still in there at quarterback. Parking out the signals. Inside handoff. First back through, barrels forward. I, boy, I thought they had him stopped and uh, Eric Backhouse was pulling on him. Inside handoff to Rick Dasso. Rick Dasso on the carry that time. Picked up a good chunk of yardage. Gets it, gets it down up to the 50 yard line. Third and three. Ball spotted right on the 50 yard line. And they're running clock. We're done with the third quarter already. It was a quick quarter, Marty. Yeah, we didn't even get through half the sheet. Score sheet that I used for uh, marking the plays, but there you see it, Howard's Grove on top, 44 to six. We'll be right back. What do you want? Just rock and roll. What? Just something simple? It says rock and roll. Are you serious? Yeah, man. I love rock and roll. Okay, dude. Some mistakes in life are permanent. Like hearing loss. To learn how to protect your hearing, visit asha.org. Time for Inhaler Wrestling! Tonight's match, CFC Inhalers, the polluting inhalers of yesterday, take on CFC Free Inhalers! CFC Free Inhalers come out with a massive puffer pump pump, followed immediately by a flawless inhaler impaler! These CFC Free Inhalers are the smart choice for asthma management, Jack. I mean, just look at their moves. Ask your doctor about the new inhalers, and call or visit the American Lung Association online to learn more. See some of the crew up here in the press box with us. Dasso, oh, oh he's through the line of scrimmage and he's got the first down, down near the 40 yard line. Hornis that was on a burst 
around the right end, left end. Eric Backus was on the tackle. First down and 10. Ball spotted inside the 40 at the 39. That makes it an 11 yard pickup. Boy, he really got a burst of speed there. Yes, he did. Hanson still at quarterback. Ooh, I, I think, think a mix-up. Yeah, I do too. He's going to throw that one out of bounds. and uh, Good play that time by Hanson to uh, prevent the big loss. He was looking for that running back and it wasn't there. Ah, what do I do? <laughs> yeah, I don't know if he turned wrong or the running back did. I'm assuming it was the running back. Well, his dad said he was a heady quarterback, so it had to be the running back. It had to have been the running back. <laughs> Second down and 10. Ball still on the 39-yard line. Wide receivers left and right. First right back through. Goes right up the middle, and that was uh, Rick Dassel. Dassel gets it uh, inside the 35-yard line, down to about the 34. Pick up a five on the play. You got too much ahead of steam there, those running backs. Big third down here again. Line shifting on the defensive side. Right up the middle goes Dassel. And he powers forward for a first down. Dassel carries for a tighter first down. That Rick Backus, Backus again was on the tackle. Ball spotted on the 27. That makes it a gain of seven for Dassel. Rick Dassel is a junior. The deep back in the formation right now is uh, Colin Hornis. He's only a sophomore. He gets a handoff and wow. powers forward down near the 20 yard line. He had good uh, leg drive there, Marty. He was carrying a couple guys on his back. Yeah, that kid's only a sophomore. He doesn't look that big either. Yeah, they don't give the sizes in there. Gain of about six on the play makes it second down and four. Ball spotted on about the 21 yard line. Hornis had a carry in the third quarter for four, so he's got 10 yards and two carries. Hornis is a deep back. Pitch out to him, cuts it back. He's gonna get knocked down near the 15 yard line. He's gonna be very close to a first down. Three. Tackle by number 53, Trevor Hansen was on the tackle. It is a first down. Ball is spotted on the 16 yard line, so give uh, Hornus a gain of five on the play. Fake to the first back through an option play, and again. Luther and Cole are doing a good job of defending the option. That's a good play by number 58. Number 58, Zach Frank made a great job on that play. No gain by Hornus. You know, is it, uh, you know, it seems like when they want to power, play power football, they, they, they move the ball quite well when they try to get a little sophisticated and, uh, you know, play with fooling the defenders, they don't do quite as well, Howard's Grove. At least in it this appears game. that way tonight, yes. Yeah. First back through. I think that was uh, Eric Brunzowitz. Who was it? Gain is six yard on the play. Matt Ospital yeah. made the first Yeah, it was number 45. Eric Brunzowitz on the carry.
Ball on the 10, that was a five yard pickup, makes it third down, five. Second back, good play. Ooh. Good penetration in there by Adam Gassner. Ganser. Ganser. Adam had good penetration that time, and by having that, it was able to hold Howards for a loss. Loss of four on the play. Oh, another field goal by Cott. Uh, he's sitting on the sideline hoping for a loss so he can kick another field goal and then he gets his wish. Just kidding. Good snap and a hold and a long kick. Boy, that was drilled deep through the uprights. Another field goal for Trent Cott. Wow. He has a good leg, Marty. Oh, no kidding. 47 to 6. And we're already down to 557 left in the ball game. Well, the mercy clock certainly does accomplish what it's meant to do. Yes. Keep the scoring, keep the score down. I thought that was a good rule when they implemented that. Oh, for sure. Well, you know, they talk about the playoffs, you know, and they've, they've tried to incorporate getting more teams into the playoffs at the end of the year. And, and I know in basketball you have everybody in the state plays, basically. In football, I don't think it would work. No, there'd probably be too many games, I think. Well, not just that, but just think about having some powerhouse team playing a team that's not very good. I mean, it'd actually be dangerous. Yeah. I mean, in basketball, you just, you know, you get beat by 40 points. You know, people don't get hurt. But in football, you get mismatches in terms of size and speed. I mean, we could feel the hits up here. <laughs> but that's just my opinion. But you're right, in too many games, you'd have to you know, draw the season out even more. It's fun when you're in the playoffs, though. Oh, I'll bet. It's a great experience. Short kick. Coming over to take it is uh, Stilo, and then he's wrapped up right at about the 25 or 26 yard line. It's going to be first down and 10. I think it was Colin Hornis was on the tackle. There's a flag down, I think, Marty. Yeah, yeah, there is. I see it right there in front of the uh, Lutheran Kohler bench. Looks like holding. Well, oh boy, just what they need can march back even farther. Penalty is on uh, Lutheran Kohler. They haven't had many tonight. They've played a pretty clean game. Well, they're marching it back inside the 20. And they'll spot it right at the 15. Well, let's see if they can get a, a good drive going here again. They scored the last time they had it. But you know, notice they don't have very good field position, do they? No. Trotting out is uh, Duco number 10. They get a good shot of that TDS. Clock running, 440 and counting. Duco fakes the handoff. Wanted to pass it, but uh, too much pressure and he's knocked down inside the 15, back at the 14. A loss of one for Duco. Tim Nierhoff, number 64, did a, hit a nice block on that play. It wasn't good enough. <laughs> <laughs> Could have been a loss. <laughs> it was a no gainer. Oh man. Second down and ten. Quick out. Is that Dale? Yep. Well, he's a little nice shifty job. on his running and gets the first down. Harrison Dale. Dale and Freeney have done a very good job after the catch and uh, running with the ball. Ball is spotted outside the 25 yard line. They get the 26, a pickup of 11 yards. Three twenty and counting in the ball game. 
Second back through is uh, Noble. He gets it up near the 30. Noble just short of the 30, so make it the 29. He picks up three yards. Second down play. See if to go to Farini on this. Keep the Kohler fans happy. There it is. Oh, almost picked off by uh, Eric Dickmeyer. But I tell you, if uh, Farini makes a catch, he might be gone. Timing was just a little off. Yep. Third down and seven. Big third down play for uh, Lutheran Kohler. They want to keep possession. Farini is the uh, wide. Dale is on the, in the slot on the left side. It's a long pass. Hey, oh, that, uh, that ball just took way too long to get out to the receiver. And again, Dickmeyer had a chance to intercept it, and he would have been gone had he caught it. Well, you might as well go for it, right, Coach? I would. You only have a minute 45 left here in the game. Actually, I like the play call. He was open. You know, you just got to get him the ball. That's a long throw for a high school. Well, for athlete. some high school kids. Yeah. That uh, Mackey that played here a few years ago, he had an arm. Cody? Cody Mackey? Yeah. Yeah, he could throw it. Actually, Chris thought of uh, all the games we did that year, Mackey was right up there. It's a long one. A lot of contact out there. No flag, though. But no flag. Pass is incomplete. We have uh, 110 remaining. And uh, I got a feeling that we'll maybe get one or two plays, a couple of knee touches, and that'll be it. Well, it's definitely been a better second half here, though, Marty. Is that because it's been faster? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, they, Lutheran, well, they actually it started late in the second quarter, and Lutheran Kohler started to do a little better. a little bit, yeah. yeah. Just the start of the game was just, uh, like you say, the special teams really turned it around for Howard's Grove. Field position means mm -hmm. so much. Yeah, there's a kneel down. That'll probably be the last play. Kneel down by Hanson. And there's 20 seconds and counting, and uh, that's going to be it. Well, I don't know if I mentioned earlier in the broadcast, but uh, Chris Wright wasn't here tonight because he's in a lost wages. He wants to see the Badgers play on uh, Saturday. And uh, Dan Burr, former teacher, coach, and athletic director out here at uh, Kohler, stepped in. And uh, again, Dan, thanks a lot for uh, coming in and uh, helping us uh, cover the broadcast and uh, you really did a great job. You got a, you got a future in this. Well, I don't know about that, Marty, but uh, uh, thank you for having me and it, it is different, definitely a different job when you're up here than you are a coach. <laughs> you can get away with more down on the sidelines, can't you? <laughs> you got to watch what you say. I, well, I used to do a lot more walking. <laughs> <laughs> Back and forth. Yeah. That was a lot easier on me. That's going to do it for our broadcast tonight uh, for the crew. Brian Andrews and uh, Eric Wiesman on the cameras. Uh, Brian on that shot right there. Scott Miloff was uh, in the truck. We had some help from uh, Steve Reiner and Spencer Williams, a Kohler grad, is a college student helping out. Our next ball game is going to be uh, Green Bay West at North uh, when uh, TV8 will be covering that game. And then after that, we'll be back out here on the 21st when Oneida Nation play as Lutheran Kohler. Hopefully we'll have a little better results that night. But uh, that's going to do it for the broadcast. Thanks again for watching. One more time, it was uh, Howard's Grove 47, Lutheran Kohler 6. So long everybody. Thanks for watching and we'll see you down the road.